sure I could see the mind from maybe in the at the jump over in the air and within the host can't get caught up on it. For so five minutes, no police. I will no police. I turn on that call back. She said I am we will look into it. Anyhow, I call I said this isn't good enough because the cop that he was pulling it, it was too heavy for him to get out. I turned out called Oil State. He called Oil State Police Station. And he spoke to the police station. Police tell me, he took my number, tell me I am for his back. Five minutes time, police on the back. Tell me somebody can be there for me. But then, then my cell phone rang. I was talking to the police station. They are on the road, they are coming. They are there. Two coming there speaking to me all the time. So I told them to stop by the school because they don't want the guy to see the van and run. So yes, I directed them, they stopped, they got out. They had the guy. Here things for this kid. An hour and five minutes after they had the guy. The lady uh, I'm, I'm not sure, three police came in the van. And David. And he told she was treating me like I was a criminal. So one the TFS one the I think police told her this is not a criminal. The guy in the back is a criminal. After waiting hours for the policeman to come, who was well dressed up, he explained to me he was attending a seminar. He came and looked at the house, he asked him what was missing and I oh sorry, let me go back to the He asked if anybody else entered the home. After the burglary occurred, I said, no, it's just me and my boyfriend. We looked around. Yes, there's something confused. He said he will call the community unit, which they took very long to come, and they came and being there waiting and just experiencing it, it wasn't a good feeling at all. Um, then in the crime prevention unit, they did come. They took fingerprints, and mind you, they threw away the dust in the house and just feeling so overwhelmed and the officer sitting there at the table and he's like very cool and I'm freaking out he's like what is going on here I don't feel as though I was satisfied in the incident um, it's um, three years later I haven't heard anything from the police with reference to what is going on with my kid my neighbor who lives in the back of me he experienced robberies on two separate occasions and we also have that battery test, that battery test in the area, I apologize. Um, yes, the police did come, but the feeling I got from the constable or whoever it was at the time that came in, it was like a you know, cares attitude. Well, this happened to you, but I'm here to just say it's a no, etc. On his robbery, I said to the police person, I said to her, you know, my house has been wrong. I haven't heard anything from the police about the case. I don't even know what is going on. She said, ma'am, it's out of the police hat. You need to speak to the CID unit. They are the person to investigate the robbery that sent her. So she, right there and then she told me, I got nothing to do with it. People really need some training in terms of communicating with people. At that time, that was not happening. I didn't feel good and up to now, to be honest with you, I don't have any faith in the police in finding who actually broke into my home, who robbed me of my most precious possessions. You know, I just feel really bad. And to go back to the young lady, when I called the 211 number, and I said to the, the supervisor, you really don't know who I am. How could you treat me like that? I said to her, I'm going to send a letter and I'm going to have that young lady fired. Because at that time you're so upset, you say things. You know, and I said, you know what? Leave it. After all these years, I haven't heard anything from the police about the robbery that I've experienced. My neighbor has not heard anything either. So we are just here. Me. It's just an accident. If you don't care, it's hit. You call the police. We have to respond. So we go to the accident. And chances are that while we're at the accident, other persons are calling also for service. Now, there is a way in which we can handle that, and 
there are no, if one of the ways is one, we can call another station and get assistance, and that happens sometimes. But I just want you to know it's not a case of sitting down and not wanting to go. It's a matter of really um, due to the, the, the few number of vehicles, the few number of officers sometimes to respond, and not only that, the numerous, the numerous requests for service, all of which we handle, every single one. Before you speak, uh, um, I want to say this again that the reason we are here is that we, we want to move the case. And that is why the commander of the police station, the superintendent in charge of the civil division, and his deputy, the community officer, and their representative from the ASPs were in Washington. We, are here. we recognize that. We want we to have challenges, but those are challenges that we heard from you today that the superintendent in charge of the show division will move to fix immediately. And if he said you earlier, he does not make sport. So he plays sport but not make it. <laughs> when it comes to work, we all work. What we want to do here this evening is to deal with the issue of joining hand and glove to get the service that you want and to return your community to what it really is, the community. There is a little what is the word in the instance, there is a little what is one of our best what is in And that is because these people stay together as a unit. And you heard here the president saying, okay, they attack X amount of people without, without any money because of the cooperation of everyone. We don't need to make Britain Sim, a community in itself. There are parts of Britain Hill that have started that process, started to become unified. And there are a lot of benefits that can be had from you from being unified. If you stay alone by yourself and don't look after each other, regardless of what resources you put at your disposal, there will not impact the way we want, we want them to impact. It must be a hand in glove situation. Tonight, what we are doing here is that we have brought some, we brought some blue brochures over there to start to, to pass information to you immediately to let you know that we are ready to start uniting you, to start working with you, to clean up the injustices that we made up to you within the Bernahilia. It is no time. We cannot do it alone. We want to put the past in the past and move forward in positivity. And we can only do that when we identify or you identify leaders within yourself to take Britain Hill forward and to make it shine again, to make it a safe neighborhood for you to live in. Many of us don't have any big money to move in any heights or terrace, but what we can do is to make more areas near heights in the terrace too. By being unified. And that is why we are here. To hear your concerns and we have heard that we have heard that we had we've had some problems. But we also know we are going to address those, that's why we are here. To have a new beginning. And that new beginning is bringing in your own new fight. And join in our fight against criminal activity within the Britain here. Can you listen? Can you answer? What is the answer? Can you ever answer? What is the answer? If you do not have all the answers here tonight, I will get back to you. Call me, and you are not happy for your number. Call me, and tell me that. Seriously, you tell me that you tell me that this is the program. Right? We promise you that. We promise you that. You want to go. I will.